Winston Marshall was a founding member of the folk band Mumford and Sons, world famous and for good reason. He played banjo and lead guitar. But last year, everything changed in an instant. Marshall tweeted praise for a book by Andy No on Antifa. He wrote this quote, finally had the time to read your important book. You're a brave man. That was it. Nothing more than that. Well, in response to that, the mob absolutely descended like a swarm of bees on Winston Marshall. He put out a statement saying he needed to assess his, quote, blind spots. And then, because of all the attention, since he didn't really want to be a political activist, he was a musician, he left the band. Now, Winston Marshall has resurfaced. He hosts a podcast for The Spectator called Marshall Matters. And he's learned a lot from the experience. We want to check in with him tonight. Winston Marshall joins us now. Winston Marshall, thanks so much for coming on. That was, I remember thinking that was, that was one of the most unreasonable attacks on anybody I've ever seen in my life, what happened to you. Um, what did you learn from it? Tucker, thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, it was quite reasonable and reflecting now, 18 months later, completely insane, really. I mean, I read a book uh, through the pandemic. I was, <laughs> I was tweeting about books I was reading from Mao's Little Red Book to uh, Tolstoy's War and Peace. And for some reason, to my not many followers, this book, tweeting about uh, Andy No, the conservative journalist, this book blew up. And um, uh, before the end of the day, the weekend, I think it was a segment on your show as well as on The View. I had Antifa online activists changing my Wikipedia page to Winston Marshall is from Winston Marshall is a banjo player to Winston Marshall is a fascist. Not only is that ludicrous, but doubly ludicrous, given that fascists actually slaughtered 30 members of my family in the Holocaust. So my family know about fascism. But um, yes. Antifa uh, is, is a, a modern day uh, problem in America. And um, and uh, I didn't, I, I guess, anticipate uh, how, how totemic the issue was at the time. And they drove you from a job that you were great at and certainly succeeding at. Um, if, if it happened to you again today, would you have handled it differently? Well, initially, I apologized. I issued an apology and I was made to take time away from the band, as you said, to examine my blind spots. Now, I don't regret that because when you offend someone, it's natural. Say you're at a dinner party, you offend someone, you say, oh, I'm so sorry, how have I offended you? And yeah. then you look into it. And I spent the months that came after that looking into the topic. Now, the book documents the 19 deaths in the first 14 days of the BLM riots. It documents the many uh, black businesses uh, uh, damaged and ruined by the looters and, and uh, in the riots, as I said, and not to mention the federal courthouse in Portland being under siege for the entire month of July 2020 and, and much else. And I looked into it and I thought i had been right. Actually, these are serious problems. And the yeah. music industry that purports to say it cares for black lives, well, it should care about the black lives because the majority of those 19 deaths were black lives. The majority of those um, businesses that were damaged were the black businesses. And so we ought to care about those. And we need to think about that when we're looking at the whole um, greater picture. So once I examined my blind spots and the author, Andy you know, the conservative journalist, uh, in that period was attacked once more by anarchist Antifa um, mobs in Portland, Oregon. I thought, you know what, my apology, it's part of the lie and I can't be part of the lie. So I decided then the only thing for me to do was to quit the band, retract my apology. But now I live in the truth and I feel liberated by that. So I'm, I'm glad for that. And I don't have any regrets. What an, what an inspiring response, living in the truth and you feel liberated by it. Let me ask you one last question because I always wonder about this since I'm not in the music business. How is your, your management team? I assume you have one, people around, manager, agent. I mean, the people who give you career advice as a, as a musician. What was their view? Well, the music industry is a very small industry. And I would say that yes. it's not entirely clear to me whether there is a chokehold by uh, progressives on the industry or whether there's a minority of progressives that have a chokehold on the majority. That's not entirely clear. But yes. um, there's certainly a lot of self-censorship going on. And that's not just in the music industry. Uh, it's a across the creative industries in Hollywood uh, and across uh, your great country, America, and in Britain, there's a lot of self-censorship. People who are too scared to say the truth. And I think that's because, you know, there's professional and social repercussions if you if you do uh, speak the truth and, and that and that's a serious issue. I know you've been talking a lot about free speech on tonight's uh, show. So I thought it worth mentioning that. And where it comes to the uh, the business side, some of them are scared. 
Some of them yeah. are scared to t say the truth and others believe, many are progressive as well, who believe that. So there's a real split there. They, when yeah, I say believe... Oh, sorry, when I say believe, I mean they believe in, the, in those progressive ideas and, and those ideologies, and they're part of the echo chamber. It's a, it's a mixture. You seem stronger and wiser for the experience, which is great to see. I, I hope you play banjo again, though, because you were, you were great. You are great. Winston, Winston Marshall, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Tucker. Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens, stories that are changing the world and changing your life. I'm Tucker Carlson tonight.